Hey guys, how you going? Hope you're all doing very well. This evening I'm going to be doing another movie review, so hopefully you find this one interesting. This movie is a horror film from the UK, English language, released in the year 2018, directed by Stefan Rasovitsky, and this film is called Patient Zero. So Patient Zero is set in a world that has been decimated by this rabies virus. The people who have been infected turn into mindless maniacs and they kill each other. So the world has gone to hell, and a group of survivors, accompanied by some scientists and the military, have seek refuge in an underground laboratory. So they're safe as long as the infected don't know where they are, and in the meantime, they're trying to come up with a cure to this problem. So the cure, uh, they basically got to get to who Patient Zero was. Patient Zero was the first infected, and he's going to hold all the clues, he or she. And so this well, this group of survivors have an advantage. Basically, one of them had been bitten during this onslaught, but he didn't fully turn. And as a result of this, he's developed the ability to communicate with the infected. So he has taken some of the infected that has been captured by the military, he's put them, in, in, put them into this interrogation room, and he's going to question them. And as he's questioning them, he's going to try and find uh, basically more of an understanding. But it's been very frustrating because the investigation is going very slowly. But what they realize is that something they've introduced inside this community is threatening to destroy them from within and basically going to tell the outside infected where they're hiding. So whether or not this is the case is something you're going to have to find out for yourself because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis. Now my thoughts on Patient Zero. I come into this movie with a healthy uh, dose of scepticism. Now the reason is because this movie only got rated 3 out of 10 on IMDb. A lot of people hated this film. They slammed it to no end. So you're probably asking me why did I even bother watching this movie. And the reason why I watched this movie was because I judge movies based on what I want. Is ba I judge movies based on how they appeal to me. And I, be I believe uh, the biggest problem with the movie review world and the movie going world in general is that a lot of people are influenced by the popular opinion. Whether a lot of people hate the movie or whether a lot of people will love a movie a lot of people seem to be swayed by that opinion and not really judging the movie based on what they think and so that's the reason why I don't take INDB scores very seriously yes I can take it as a template as to whether to go into a movie with massive expectations or low expectations but I go into a movie giving it a fair chance to appeal to me as a moviegoer now you guys know I judge movies very very honestly and sometimes that gets me hate sometimes that gets me praise but I don't really care about that is because what's the point of talking about movies if you're not going to base it or judge on what you think. And so when other people give your, their opinion on what they think, this is the whole idea of reviewing movies, is that you get a little bit of a discussion going. And you can't get a discussion going if you're not being honest. And so that's the reason why I wanted to see Patient Zero, is that it did interest me in its story. I thought Stefan Rasovitsky is an accomplished European director, so I was in, uh, keen to see what he could deliver in an English speaking film. And also Stanley Tucci was acting in the movie. Now Stanley Tucci, very very versatile actor. I, I like him a lot and so I thought alright well hopefully that was a recipe for a film that would be at least worthy of viewing but unfortunately at the end of the day I have to say that I agree with the majority of people who say that this movie is a very very bad experience and the reason why it's so bad and so disappointing in my I, in my view was the fact that I felt that Stefan Rusvitsky as a director has lost his identity and that is a great shame because a lot of these foreign directors actually lose their identity because I don't believe they have the confidence in actually giving the world a different sort of experience and in this case the experience of the European cinema. So Stefan Rusevitsky, he directed a few German films, the guy called Anatomy and Anatomy 2. Now those movies weren't brilliant but they had a strong European presence and he's also directed a very recent film called Cold Hell. Now that's a German movie that I haven't seen yet that I'm looking very forward to but I haven't seen that movie but at, once again it looks very interesting. So it's a very interesting director so he's obviously come to the English speaking world and unfortunately whether it's the studio saying that you can't have European qualities because a lot of European qualities aren't really appreciated by English speaking, uh, the English speaking side of world cinema is that they have a very specific idea and that you have to maintain to that template and so whether it was the studio saying that they just don't have confidence or whether it was the director not having confidence that what made him good in his homeland is going to have uh, the same effect in uh, another land and so that was the biggest disappointment is that such a, an accomplished director this movie reeked of a director who was just starting out who was basically willing to make mistakes in order to improve in the future but when you've got an accomplished director that's no real excuse and so this movie is just bare bones the movie just 
just didn't have anything going for it. Yes, I had an interesting idea, although it was a little bit silly that this guy could communicate with the infected. I thought, all right, well, he's trying something a little bit different. But the, the overall idea is never utilized. And it always, I always thought to myself that the idea was there just to give the movie an excuse for existing. Is that it never really goes into the history of, you know, basically this virus. It doesn't go into depth. It doesn't go into depth into any of these characters. So you've got Matt Smith, who plays the main character, who I thought was really forgettable, very unlikable. You've got Natalie Dormer, who plays a scientist, which once again was a very empty experience. The only decent performance was from Stanley Tucci, and he's only in the movie for about five or ten minutes. And when he gives his basically a monologue of what this virus is all about and what the world is facing, I thought that was really, it had me on edge. It really had me unsettled. And that's showcasing how good an actor this guy is, but he was just so out of places because you've got a really good performance and a very bright patch of the movie that has been overshadowed and engulfed by a huge level of darkness. And that darkness just reaped of incompetence. You've got the editing that I thought was really ordinary. The worst part of the film was the score. The score is dictating nearly every scene what you should feel, whether it's a chase scene where it's got this chase sort of action music, whether it's an emotional scene where you've got this emotional music. Everything was just dictating how you should feel and therefore it didn't actually give the impression that this director had any confidence in what he was doing. It felt like he had his hands tied behind his back and the studios were controlling each and every step. And so Stefan Rasovitsky was in the movie. He's the director. You've got Stanley Tucci who was in the movie as an actor, but I never felt as though their talents were fully used. And therefore... Their names were just in the spotlight to try and sell the film. Now, apparently, this movie was supposed to be a cinematic experience, but it went straight to DVD, and I can completely understand why. It's just a complete failed attempt at giving you something new in the zombie slash infected subgenre. So you've got uh, the when the movie goes oh, balls to the wall insane towards the end. I thought it was mildly entertaining, but overall, it's just a film that I just come away from expecting so much more, based on the fact that this is a foreign director who has made a name for himself. Obviously, he's got the attention of studios over in the, uh, basically in the British world, and so I, I just thought to myself, he's been stripped of all creative liberties that made him good, and he's basically had to make a movie where he's just going through the motions, and it just comes across as a complete waste of time. So, there are some very silly moments, there are moments where I thought, alright, you've got talent there, you've got potential there, but it's never used, it's just a really hollow experience, there are a few sub-stories, uh, you know, side plots as far as romance are concerned, with the main character, but because you don't care about the main character, those those plot points just don't work. It just felt like everything was thrown in there. It was going to make a movie. It really wasn't going to you know, basically do its homework. It wasn't going to get uh, you have basically have fine attention to the minor details. And therefore, it all adds up into a complete mess. And it's just uh, a mess that, uh, unfortunately, I have to agree with the majority. So overall, for Patient Zero, don't even bother. I'm going to give this one half a star. All right, guys, that's it for my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, keep watching movies, and I'll see you later. Bye.